So uh, go ahead, uh, Angelique. I've got, I think I got it up on screen. I'm trying to pull your tweet up right now too, but Twitter changed their, f- there's a whole bunch of broken stuff so on it, Twitter. It's not, it's not okay right now. It's no, my it fault. is very sick. I'm really sorry. But that's why uh, we're here. Yeah, I just, I, we had to go live to share it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously Among Us is a great game. We all know this. We've been playing it for weeks now. I've been playing it with my gaming club for like, over a month now every week that's what we've been playing and we've been having so much fun i'm like in tears laughing every single time and i teach english high school english um and my kids are silent i never hear them um as i'm sure my friends in chat and my friends here who teach high school or any level except for like kindergarten and lower elementary know like during distance learning kids mics aren't on their cameras are definitely not on and when you ask them to unmute their mic, they're like, yes, no, uh, you know, and it's just like so painful. And I think like that's when what's been draining me the most out of the last eight months or however long we've been in quarantine um, is I love talking to my students. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to bring this into my classroom. It's finals week. So I tricked my kids and I didn't put this in my tweet, but On my agenda today, I told my kids they had um, one minute impromptu persuasive speeches for their final. (laughs) And um, I surprised them with playing Among Us and my kids just lost it. And it was so much fun. Every single one of my kids were talking, um, unmuting their mics. Some of my kids turned their cameras on, which is like unheard of because I said, like, if you want to challenge yourself, we can all have our cameras on because that's a whole nother level. And um, it was like, not only did we play all period and everyone was talking, but on top of that, my kids wouldn't leave my Zoom. And you guys know, like the second you're like, all right, you're free to go. It's like, everyone's gone except for the two kids who like muted you and put you in another tab and forgot that you were there, (laughs) right? Like, and then I like mess with them and I'm like, is anybody there? And then they (laughs) sneak out and they exit. But they wouldn't leave my Zoom. My kids, my third period stayed all the way through lunch, which was 45 minutes playing with us. Like we were all playing together. And then I said, you guys need to go to fourth period. And they're like, can we still play? And I'm like, it was just crazy. It was like the best day because I haven't heard any, like most of those kids' voices for the last yeah. 10 weeks, 10 weeks. And they're like screaming at each other. So. I was like, I need to share this with everyone because it was just so awesome. The importance of play. Uh, Even today, uh, when I was having a conversation with, uh, we're looking at some ways that we can engage some of our students who we'll call, uh, the term I've learned today and accepted over the last couple of weeks, and it's a very good term, I feel, is neurodiverse. Rather than talking about somebody being on the spectrum, which we're all on a spectrum somewhere, neurodiversity is a much more appropriate term when we're talking about things. And the uh, students who are neurodiverse in our virtual program don't always fit into the curriculum that we've got, you know, the way the universal design for learning concepts. But one of the things too, that I found really helpful recently, and this is something that goes back to things my mom and I used to do and the way we used to communicate was when there were serious conversations, most of the time, unless she was yelling at me, which was rare, I was a good boy. I, I swear, my my parents say I tiptoed through adolescence. I didn't go out on every Friday and Saturday night. Was watching USA Network, all the B movies that they had. Uh, it was it was Gilbert Gottfried and uh, Rhonda Shear, I think. Up all up all night. Anyway, uh, sorry, dating myself. Anyway, um, so. But we we would cook together and that's when we would have the conversations. You know, I'd be I'd be busy with something with my hands doing all these things. That's that that was that the other some of my check ins now with some of my students. It's uh, always playing Minecraft. Well, don't take them out of Minecraft. Yeah, leave leave them in Minecraft. I had better check ins with my one student in particular while he was playing Minecraft and engaging him in that first and then having the conversation, the the serious stuff and going the back and forth. So this, what you're talking about is, you know, I'm sure it's a tried old trick that some mothers and fathers used with their kids years ago and psychologists, you know, there's now game therapy where therapists are actually meeting with people who need therapy services in game. Like, Mm -hmm. Hey, we're going to play call of duty together and kill Nazis and talk about how your mom or your dad ruined your life or whatever it is that your problem is. So 
it, it, there's there's good psychology in what you're talking about, Angelique. Well, and there's like, and you know what blew me away today was I have a, um, a student who is a, I teach, um, so I teach regular sophomore English, like college prep sophomore English, but I also get all the English language learner students who it's their first time in a mainstream English classroom. And I also co-teach um, SPED students, so students that are on IEPs and 504s. So I have like kids from all over the spectrum and one of my students who has never said a word because she barely speaks any English was popping off in Zoom today. Like, I mean, obviously like she's trying to like say everything in English so you could see her trying, but I'm like, this is crazy. Like I haven't been able to get this kid to unmute just one-on-one -on -one with me. And now she's talking to 10, you know 13 people who are in this room on zoom and i'm like this is just i like it's it was just it was awesome obviously they're practicing english skills and it's easy for me as an english teacher to incorporate this but as a community building activity like i know that my kids are going to come in on tuesday and be way more um you know able to unmute themselves and feel way more comfortable within breakout rooms when we're doing something with a book or whatever else mm -hmm. And take, and take us through this, too, because your rules, I mean, the game, you know, most kids know the game. Right. A lot of adults have seen it, maybe played it. Um, I have never played it in a group of more than my children until recently because I don't like just going into regular, you know, just playing randos. Because right. that just okay. God yeah. knows what. Yeah. Car too. Carrie and her Sea of Thieves experience has frightened me away. So. <laughs> yeah. Right. But uh, so t talk talk about what is this? How does this work for per persuasive speeches? So really, the only thing that I changed is the custom settings and, and I structured the discussion time. So there's a slide on there that says discussion time. Yeah, this one. So I structured it. So, it, you know, normally in Among Us, it's chaos mm -hmm. and everyone's yelling at each other and accusing each other. And then uh, like inevitably, one person kind of takes the reins on the on the um, conversation. So I wanted everybody's voice to be heard. So I structured it and I said, we're gonna have a 90 second discussion time and it's gonna be split in, in three parts. The first 30 seconds, everyone needs to make a claim. Everyone can either, you can go and report out where you were, what you saw or who you think the imposter is and why. But nobody can like counter claim, there's no counter arguments yet. And then we go around and I, I really facilitated that discussion and kind of just went down the list and the second 30 seconds is open to counterclaims or you can vouch for someone else, right? Like the, my examples I have there, I don't think Miss Giannis is the imposter because I saw her do med bay, right? If someone's accusing me. And then the last 30 seconds um, is everyone again, where you state whether you agree or disagree with someone and why and decide who you're gonna vote for. And then you go into to voting time for 30 seconds. So it's a little bit longer discussion time than they're used to because they usually just yell at each other and then just like panic vote. <laughs> but I was like, you know, I want everyone's voices to be heard. That's the most important thing that I wanted. I wanted everyone to talk and I wanted it to be like a more structured claim and evidence because I'm an English teacher um, with sentence frames. So it, it worked well. I mean, so at times it gets heated towards the end of the game. We know this, but from the get-go, the structure helped. And so I had this projected, um, my screen shared with just this slide as we were playing, because obviously I can't share my game. So, yeah, unless I'm the imposter. <laughs> well, and it, here's the thing I love too about the game is that once you're eliminated, whether you're kicked out or you are the imposter, if you're the imposter, we know the game is over, but if you, or impasta, as some of our, my Italian uh, descent students have been calling it recently. And we actually have an emote in our discord for impasta, which is one of the uh, um, among us characters uh, striped in the Italian flag colors. But anyway, um, what, it, what I like about it is if you're eliminated, you still participate. There is mm -hmm. still you're you're a ghost floating around and you can still yeah. cause havoc or complete your jobs or whatever it is. Right. So, yeah. And yeah. then it becomes so then it becomes obviously the ghost chat. So uh, because, you know, the kids are coming for my life right out the gate. Yeah. Like <laughs> and I told them today, if you kill me, you get an F where we're, it's finals. <laughs> like if I'm dead, you're getting an F. It didn't work. Um, because it came for me, like I barely got to play today because they were all like gunning for my life. 
um, which I thought was hilarious, but also kind of frustrating. But then you you go into like the ghost chat. So we're all talking like, man, like, and I'm talking like, well, what's that person's strategy, right? Like one of my kids was the imposter. We all knew he was the imposter. So we're talking about like, how is he convincing people? Oh, and he played the, I, I do the same thing in this game. I act like I don't know what's going on. I'm like, what do you right. mean? I don't know, where, what? Like, what are you talking about? So we were talking about their strategies in the ghost chat, even though we were dead. So it was, it was awesome. 10 out of 10, highly recommend. Do you use the in-game chat or do you use what are the Zoom chat? We were we were using the in-game chat as we were as we were playing, like as a ghost. Um, okay. I, I was uh, so I was using kind of both. I used the Zoom chat for when I was dead because I was no longer kind of guiding that conversation. Mm -hmm. I would say if I noticed like they were talking over someone, I would say, hey, let so-and-so talk. Like I would say that in Zoom. So they would be like, oh, sorry. And they would, so just to bring everyone's voices out. The one thing I also really like about this game is, I mean, I, I love, so I used to teach self-contained. So PE was also something that that I had to teach. And I think that's becoming more and more common across like the country of, of classroom teachers having to teach PE too. But I'd have my kids create PE games. And one of the hardest things for them to wrap their heads around was what to do with somebody when they're out. Mm -hmm. And my criteria was always like, if you're creating a PE game, once somebody is out, they have to still be active. And I, it was a really hard concept for kids to grasp. Right. Uh, I love this game as a foundation for that, because like if you taught PE and having kids create games of their own this is something you could have them walk through like you could bring this game up have them play it and be like okay now that's what i'm talking about like you're out of the game but you're not out of the game you can still sabotage you can still you know be doing your your you know your tasks like there's still something that you're doing you're still contributing um so i think it's fun to now have like a video game example of that yeah and helping your team win too yeah um yeah, absolutely. And I, 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 the the other thing that I was thinking of, I'm like, wow, this could be amazing in person too, because obviously we're in person, we're in class right now, but the kids can't be around each other. Well, you can do this exact same thing, whether or not you're distance learning or in person. 